is Ken Roberts inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. Ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, wanted a gun. little neighborhood pet shop. Only a few pert canaries are there, half a dozen drowsy puppies, and the poker-faced fat man who is Paxton, the proprietor. Then the street door opens and... Hello, Paxton. Oh, evening, Mr. Mercer. You're, uh, all alone, I see. Yeah? What's that young bull terrier of yours need tonight, huh? Well, I, uh, I just dropped in to say hello. Ah, that's good of you, you look as though you had something on your mind, Mr. Mercer. I... Paxton, I want a gun. A gun? I've been told you can get me one. I sell pet supplies, not guns. Whoever told you... That... I got a phone call today from a man who said you... You knew the right people. He wouldn't give me his name, but he was obviously somebody who knows the spot I'm in. As you must know it, you hear all the neighborhood gossip. Oh, I know Jeff Robbins gets out of city jail tomorrow after serving 60 days for throwing a punch at his wife because of you. I had nothing to do with her. Robbins is just a jealous fool. But you figure Robbins will come out of jail pretty sore at both of you. He's threatened both of us, and I need a gun to protect myself. How about her? Well, she'll be with friends he doesn't know about, but I can't disappear like that. I've got to be at my job. Now, I don't want to go to the police for protection. I see. Will you get me a gun? Well, if I don't, you'll try to get it from somebody else. Yes. Well, Mr. Mercer, then I may as well get your business. And I won't be too hard on your pocketbook. A good handgun, fully loaded, will cost you only 75 bucks. 75? Well, under the counter prices usually run from 200 up. <laughs> yes, you don't know much about guns. No, I... No, I don't. I've got 75 on me. Give me the gun. Oh, I, hey, I don't keep those things in stock. You get your rod tomorrow. That's Wednesday. You come to the back door of my shop for it at 6 tomorrow night. But Robbins will be released long before that. Well, he'll have a few things to do besides looking for you. He's half owner of the business for one thing, and he'll want to know how his partner's been running it. Besides, you know, Mr. Mercer... Sixty days in jail can take the fight out of a fella. All right. I'll be at your back door for that gun at six tomorrow night. You and Miss Williams work in the night shift this week, huh, Casey? Yes, that'll be at 4 p.m. till midnight. Rick, darn it. Made me miss out on passes for Wednesday matinee today. Oh, working sure interferes with a person's relaxation. <laughs> well, there's one regular pleasure that I count on, boy, and I get it regardless, and that's putting on the old feed bag. Annie, it's half past six. It's dinner time. Come on, let's find ourselves a table. Huh? I'm all for that, Casey. I can recommend our pig's knuckles and sauerkraut today if you like it. We don't. We don't. Uh, then I suggest, and we're both like this, I know. Tell the waiter, see, to tell the chef. Oh, excuse me. Let the call ring and tell us. What? Oh, you can't do that. Bruno Cafe, tell the chef. Uh, Ethelbert speaking. Yeah, they're here. City desk. Oh, it's that night. Hello, Bert. Hey, look, this is supposed to be our dinner out. Okay, where do we go? He puts on the old feed bag regardless. Yeah, we'll get up there right away, Bert. All right, so long. Now, what is it this time? Murder. Some guy named Jeff Robbins has been shot to death. Well, the delayed dinner problem is solved for him. Well, come on, Annie. Come on, let's go. Dark alleyway at about 6.15, Miss Williams. A guy had been shot shortly before that. Shot point-blank range, too, Logan. His overcoat thinned. And we have a 48, Casey. Twice, to make sure. And we have the slugs. Uh, the dead man's name, Captain, was Jeff Robin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's stuff in his pockets to identify them immediately. He's a partner in a small chemical firm and just got out of jail. Just out of jail? Mm-hmm. For getting drunk and slugging his wife. 
Is he as crazy jealous of her? With reason, maybe. I'm told she's quite a dish. Now, off the record for the time being, Miss Robbins was especially green-eyed over a guy named Mercer. Hey, well, that sounds like something. Of course, you men are looking for Mercer. Now, they're looking for everyone who had any connection with Robbins. Oh, Captain. Yes, Sergeant? Here's Mr. Bantry, Captain. Bantry? The dead man's business partner. Oh, yes. Uh, you are Mr. I am uh, Carl Bantry, Captain. Is, uh, is that uh, under the sheet? Is that... Uh, uh, yes. I'd like you to look at the body, Mr. Bantry. Necessary. We need your supporting identification. Very well. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Oh, no, take it easy, Mr. Bantry. I've known this man ever since. We went through college together and, and the war, and since then we've been business partners. Uh, I understand. Uh, Mr. Bantry, I've been told that many people, including his wife, found Robin's a difficult man to get along with. Well, Jess, Robbins did drink too much, and he was subject to fits of wild temper and of unreasoning jealousy, but I liked him. He was a loyal friend and a brilliant chemist. You and he were in the chemical business, Mr. Bantry? Uh, yes, Mr. Casey's my name, Morning Express. I'd like some pictures of you, if you don't mind. Oh, very well. Thank you. Well, just go on talking to Captain Logan. I'll get some unposed shots of you. Oh, there's one more question I'd like to ask you. First, Casey, you'll wait until I ask my question. Oh, all right, all right. And now, Mr. Bantry, tell me what you know about Robin's recent imprisonment for assault and battery and his attitude toward a man named Hugh Mercer. You've learned about Mercer? Yeah. The reporter was very bitter toward Mercer, wasn't he? He made threats of what he'd do to him after he got out of jail. Yes. You uh, think that Mercer may have killed him in order to avoid fulfillment of those threats? I'm asking what you think. I know very little about Mercer. Now, what do you think? What do you know? Well, he's a rather good-looking young fellow who's probably attractive to a certain type of woman. This is Robin, sir. The boys are bringing in Mercer now, Captain. Yeah? Hey, this I want. Hey, you fellas have got to believe me. You've got to believe me. This is Mercer, Captain. They picked him up as he tried to hop a bus six blocks from here. Oh, he did, huh? I and they found this, Captain, a thirty-eight revolver in his pocket, fully loaded, except for two slugs that have been recently fired. I've never fired that gun. I didn't know it had been fired. I bought that gun from Paxton tonight, the pet shop First, man. he swore he found it. I'm telling you the truth now. You've got to believe me. Tell me the truth, Mercer. Tell me all about this gun and Paxton's pet shop. So you freely admit, Paxton, that Hugh Mercer came to your pet shop last night and... Yes, Captain. His statements about last night, as you just read them to me, are substantially true. But his continued statement in which he claims that he received a gun from me tonight is altogether untrue. You deny that Mercer came to the back door of your shop at six tonight and paid you $75 in exchange for a loaded thirty-eight revolver? Of course. Now, look, Captain, I've been in business at the same address for nearly eight years. The neighborhood cops know me well. I definitely do not keep guns at my place or sell guns. Somebody told Mercer that you did. Well, we have only his word for that, Mr. Casey. Well, why should he have propositioned you? That part of his story isn't true. Well, frankly, I think it is true. I figure somebody told him he could buy a gun from me as a joke. I suppose you want us to believe that you strung along the joke with no idea of providing him with a gun. Well, I strung him along because by letting him think I'd get him an illegal gun and cheap, I figured he wouldn't shop elsewhere. And then if he'd come to my place tonight, I intended to talk him out of the gun idea. If that failed, uh, well, I meant to notify the cops. Why didn't you notify the cops first? He'd have denied anything I said, and I'd prefer to keep out of other people's business. Well, because you delayed, Robbins was killed tonight by Mercer. Are you sure Mercer did the job? Well, the murder bullets were fired from the gun that was found on him. Oh, I see. Paxton, you knew Robbins, didn't you? Well, he came into my place occasionally to buy bird seed for a pair of finches I sold his wife several years ago. You know Mrs. Robbins better. Uh, she's been in my shop more often. Well, we understand she's a... Fine-looking gal. I understand. You haven't seen her yet? Uh, she was a little hard to locate, but she's being brought here to headquarters now. Oh, I see. Now, that'll be all for now, Paxton. Go home. Don't discuss our conversations with anyone. And be back here at headquarters at 10 tomorrow morning. Uh, I'll be here, Captain. Good night. Good night. Hello. 
Morgan. You figure that guy's in the clear, so clean, you just let him walk away? Anyone with his excess blubber won't walk too far, Casey. And he tells a straight, believable story. I mean, he was ready with a lot of good answers. Well, you don't think he's on the level, Casey? Mm-hmm. You know, this Mercer was a perfect sitting duck for a frame-up. He was scared of Robin's threats, and a lot of people knew it. Paxton might have slipped in that gun, as Mercer claims, after it had been used to bump off Robbins. Well, that would mean Paxton bumped off Robbins. Where's his motive? Well, don't forget, there's a good-looking dame in this picture, Logan. You mean Paxton might be gone and Mrs. Robbins so gone he'd knock off her husband and frame her boyfriend? Well, that sort of thing has happened. Oh, you'll never sell that overstuffed bird seller to me as a guy who kills for love. No, to me either. Mm, well, I'm afraid I agree with you, as a matter of fact. Paxton might take a big chance for big dough, but not for a dame. Mercer did the killing, Casey. Yeah, I guess so. Come in. Mrs. Robbins is here, Captain. This I want to see. Are you found her at a party, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Just as I phoned you. She left the friends Mercer told us she was staying with early this afternoon and went to another place. Afraid her husband might find her. She was at this party when Robbins was killed, so she's in the clear. Yeah, I figured that since we got Mercer and his gun. Sergeant. Do you consider her the heartbreaker we've heard described? Oh, yeah. And she uses beautiful perfume. Perfume? Uh, you'll notice it yourself, Captain. Uh, bring her in. Uh, yes, sir. Beautiful perfume. Some of these cops are yours, Lonnie. The captain's ready for you, Mrs. Robin. Thank you. Captain? Uh, oh. I am Captain Logan, Mrs. Robin. How do you do? Hey, she is good looking. So are gold plated dumbbells. She doesn't make me think of a dumbbell. <laughs> Yes, please sit down, Mrs. Robbins. Thank you, Captain. Oh, you'll find this chair the best, I think. Thank you, Mr. Uh, my name's Casey. Hmm. Now, just relax, Mrs. Robbins. We realize you've had some very shocking news. And I, I shan't add to your trouble. Just a few routine questions. And then you can go home. You're so kind. Uh, uh, may I have a drink of water? No, I'll get it. I'll get it. No, I got it. Casey! Well, Logan. Hmm. No exhibition as you and Captain Logan put on, Casey. Like, like a pair of freshman wolves. Hmm. We didn't do anything of the kind, Anne, and I'm tired of hearing you nag, too. Now just pipe down so I can watch my driving and try to think. I, I... I'm sorry, kid. It's okay. I have been catty. But would you mind giving me a good explanation of why you and Logan treated her so tenderly? She was scared. Logan and I tried to relax her, that's all. Well, even you must admit she loosened up and talked freely before we let her go. She didn't tell you anything about her husband's murder. I think she told us all she knew. I don't. For my money, she put Mercer up to killing her husband. I'm not too sure Mercer did kill her husband. Casey, he was found with the murder gun. I want to learn a lot more about that murder gun. For just that purpose, I'm driving to Paxton's apartment next to his pet shop just as soon as I drop you off at your place. You're driving to Paxton? Mm-hmm. My surprise visit might catch him off guard. I'll go to Paxton's with you. What? And nag me all the way? Oh, no, you won't. Oh, I'll no. promise not to say another word about your treatment of Mrs. Robbins. I'll even agree that she's beautiful, brainy, and uses fine perfume. Yeah? <laughs> I can't ask all that. Just keep an open mind, kid. About her, and Mercer, and Paxton. Paxton can't be in, Casey. Well, I'll try this door. Well, it's locked. Come on in, Annie. Wait, well, we can't walk in. Yes, we can't. I came here to see Paxton, and I'm going Casey, to... look, there. What? He's lying beside that chair. Guy's dead, Annie. Another burn. But Robin didn't mind. He's been poisoned. He... It's a corrosive acid poison. I can smell it. Hmm. So can I now. And I, I smell something else. So do I. Perfume. This is Robin's perfume, Casey. Casey, with the scent of a very distinctive perfume floating in the air of this room, am I still supposed to keep an open mind about the fascinating Mrs. Robbins? But why should she have killed Paxton? Well, like Mercer, Paxton was in love with that woman. She used both him and Mercer to rid herself of a jealous, brutal husband. Both Mercer and Paxton? Yes. 
Mrs. Robbins persuaded Mercer that he needed a gun to protect himself from her husband. She knew he couldn't be depended upon to kill anybody, even in self-defense. Paxton was made of stronger stuff. Last night, at her urging, Paxton got Mercer to come to him for a gun by means of that mysterious phone call. Uh And tonight, Paxton shot Robbins a short time before Mercer was to call for the gun and then gave him the murder weapon for the cops to find on him. Well, then you figure Mrs. Robbins wanted Paxton, her accomplice, out of the way. Yes. She came here as soon as she was released by Captain Logan, suggested that Paxton set out highballs, and there are two empty glasses on this table, Casey, and spiked his drink with poison. Well, it's a good theory, Annie, but... Uh... Casey! Huh? There's something in this dead man's hand, something that looks like... Let me look. see. It. Right. It's a piece. An entire corner torn from a $100 bill. Clutched in his finger. Annie. That perfume isn't simply floating in the air. This piece of a $100 bill is soaked with it. Smell it. Yes. Because she had it in her purse. She paid Paxton money for the murder of her husband, Casey, and then killed him to get the money back. And as he was dying, she tore it from his hand. The way it looks, kid. Well... Now, wait a minute. We won't bring in the cops on this yet. We're calling on Mrs. Robbins first, and right now. Why have you and Miss Williams come here? You haven't disturbed your sleep, Mrs. Robbins. You... After what has happened today, will you please tell me... Where did you go after Captain Logan told you you might leave headquarters? Stay home. And you've been here ever since? Yes. You didn't go to Paxton's pet shop? I know. Why should I? Well, the point is, did you? I certainly not. Paxton has been... Now, wait a minute. Hmm? That handbag on your table that you carried when we met at headquarters, I believe, isn't it? Yes. Perfume. It was dropped after I came home, and a perfume flask inside was broken. What are you doing with my bag? I want to see what's in it. Give it to me. You aren't. Not only break a flask of perfume in your bag, but you leave a wad of $100 bills in it with a torn-off corner. It's perfect. Well, that's what you two are talking about. And I don't know where all that money came from. Two change in my bag. If I'd come home alone... If you... You're... You killed Paxton. You're going to tell how you contrived your husband. Oh. Well, the police won't think so. Now, wait a minute, then. Wait. Wait? Yes. Mr. Casey... You must believe me. You didn't come home alone, Mrs. Robbins? Somebody paid your cab fare? Yes, Mr. Bantry. Bantry? My husband's partner. He was waiting outside of police headquarters. Well, was he with you when you dropped your bag and broke that perfume flask? It was Mr. Bantry who dropped the bag and accidentally stepped on it. Oh, yeah? Who inherits your husband's share of the Robbins and Bantry chemical firm? I do. Was your husband insured in favor of his partner? No. They talked about partnership insurance but couldn't afford the premium. They planned to take it out after the formula was perfected and sold. The formula? It was something they've been very excited about. A secret chemical process that will improve the quality of cheap, thin plastic. But Jeff said it would make us rich. Has Bantry discussed this formula with you? No. He knows how ignorant I am about such things. Mrs. Don't... Robbins, I want you to phone Bantry and ask him to come here right away. Come here? At this hour? Yeah, I've got an idea he's still awake, waiting for news about you rather than from you. Now, if you were to tell him... You've learned something about that formula that it's, uh, that it's been sold, for instance. Mr. Casey... Now, never mind. Wait a minute. I'll dope out a complete plan of action for you by the time he can get here. And then, I want you to offer him a drink. But why? We'll be here, out of sight. Okay. Annie, I'm playing a hunch. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Bantry. Mr. Bantry? Why, Ella, have I stopped being called? That remains to be seen. Let me close the door. Who's been talking to you about that formula? Carl, we've been friends a long time. Let's stay that way. I need friends now. Of course, of course, Ella, my dear. Now, don't you worry. Why don't we have a drink? Would you like one? Well, yes. Yes, I would. If you'll join me. I will. I have everything right here. You uh, heard nothing more from the police since you left headquarters? No, why should I? I simply wondered. Sorry for you. Scotch for me. Yes, thanks. Now, what about that formula? Who's been talking to you? No one. I was free. I just wanted to make sure that I receive a full half share of the money that formula brings in. Oh, is that all? 
Well, don't you worry. You'll get Jeff's full share of the profits from that formula. Let's drink to it. All right. Uh, but uh, put a little more rye in my glass first, huh? Certainly. They win. Ah, uh, that's fine. Here you are. Thank you. Now, we'll clean glasses and... Uh, Bottoms up. She doesn't drink that. Well, take that glass from Mrs. Robbins, Anne, and don't spill a drop of it. I won't. It's the evidence we need. Let me go. I don't want to hold you, Pansy, so I'll use this to keep you here. Oh. Mr. Casey. He poured yes. something into your glass while you were fixing his drink. Well, Mr. Casey, the same poison used on Paxton. Poison? Yes. But I don't understand. I don't get it all yet. Anne, get the cops here. They'll make this character talk. And we'll all be interested in what he'll have to say. <laughs> What did Bantry confess to the cops, Casey? Well, we have the full story now, and you can read it in the Morning Express, Ethelbert. I don't want to wait to read it. <laughs> well, okay, impatient, then. I'll tell you. That formula, a process to toughen cheap plastics, was perfected during Robin's stretch in jail. And it can be sold for at least 100 grand. Bantry wanted all of it. With the promise of a few thousand, he persuaded Paxton to frame Mercer with that gun after Bantry killed his partner with it. Bantry shot Robin? Yeah, and passed the gun to Paxton. And then he poisoned Paxton and hung a pretty little frame around uh, her. And he would have gotten away with it if our Mr. Casey... Oh, well, it's nothing, Ann, at all. I just merely had an inspiration. If our Mr. Casey wasn't so pig-headed as to think a good-looking gal can do no wrong. Uh, <clears throat> My great gift for character reading gets no respect from certain people, ever. Hmm. I'd like to meet Mrs. Robbins, Casey. Y- you say she's a blonde? Mm-hmm. Blonde. Wow. Yo, I mean, the Bruno Cafe Ethelbert's begin. <laughs> 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 